challenging to study the behavior of animals that live in the vast expanse of the open ocean. Once they leave shore or the side of a boat, they all but disappear. I'm Matthew Hardcastle, and in this episode of Science Sessions, we'll explore how advances in animal-borne video cameras are giving researchers new insights into the behavior of marine animals foraging in the open ocean. In recent years, cameras have become smaller, and batteries and data storage have become more efficient. Combined with other devices, such as GPS trackers and depth sensors, video recorders can give scientists an animal's eye view of life far from shore and beneath the surface. In a recent PNAS article, Taiki Adachi, an ecologist at the National Institute of Polar Research in Japan, attached a cheek-mounted camera to elephant seals to observe how they use their whiskers to locate prey in the dark depths of the ocean. I mainly work on northern species, which is called the northern elephant seal. They are deep divers. Mainly, they find prey around 400 to 600 meter depths. Sometimes they go beyond 1,000 meter too. So they find the prey in such a dark place. So at the shallow water, they don't move whiskers at all. The whiskers are stayed on the, the backward, which is called retracted. But when they go beyond the 200 meter or even deeper, they start to move whiskers and then extend it forward like antenna, which is probably for sensing hydrodynamic cue caused by a moving prey. In terms of video recording, Around 20% of all events had bioluminescence when uh, seals find the prey. Our study showed that seals take another mammalian adaptation to the deep dark ocean by developing whiskers to locate prey. Beyond understanding how animals find prey in the ocean, understanding the types of prey they hunt can be critical to conservation efforts. In an article published in Frontiers in Marine Science, Carrie Kuhn, an ecologist at the Alaska Fisheries Science Center in Seattle, Washington, explored how the size of prey affected the foraging behavior of northern fur seals. I study northern fur seals, which are found throughout the North Pacific. Our organization is interested in understanding why the Alaska stock in particular has been declining over a number of years. We analyzed when they were finding prey, how successful they were, what the size of the prey was, and in many cases, we tried to identify the prey species as well. We were looking at differences of when they forage on young pollock versus adult pollock. The younger pollock were captured more frequently at night. They come up into really shallow waters within a couple meters of the surface at night. Not all animals fed on large fish, but those that did tended to catch them more often during the daytime. So they would make these really long deep dives that go all the way to the bottom, 80, 80 plus meters. And then they would capture a single large fish as opposed to when they were feeding on the smaller pollock, they were gathering a lot of fish. I kind of relate it to like eating popcorn versus eating a steak. Being able to record when and where animals find their food is really important. If we can get a baseline now of what's going on. We can predict what's gonna happen in the future. Even animals that forage closer to the surface can be challenging to locate and observe. In an article published in Scientific Reports, Ryan Logan, an ecologist at California State University, Long Beach, recorded a solitary sailfish hunting in the open ocean and estimated its energy expenditures. In the dive where the predation event occurred, we see a very, very quick and rapid ascent toward the surface. When that fish hits the surface, it kind of banks left and that's the first glimpse you get of the actual prey. The sailfish kind of has several of these capture attempts on the little tuna, and it's often breaking the surface of the water when it's doing that. You see these kind of bubbles forming, moving past the camera. At one point in the video, it's really funny, the, the little tuna comes and hides right next to the sailfish, like on its flank, out of its peripheral view, which is very interesting, kind of an anti-predator behavior. But the, the tuna doesn't stay there for very long, for whatever reason, and it actually comes up and over the sailfish, and you have this kind of quick jolt over to the right, and then you see this kind of head shake behavior from the sailfish. And then this very return to a calm, normal swimming right after that event leads us to believe that it was a successful predation event. These fish have a, a very high metabolic rate in general, 
but the predation event had a very low overall impact on the daily energy expenditures. In an article published in Science Advances, Simone Wiedesen, an ecologist at Aarhus University in Denmark, performed a similar analysis of the energetic efficiency of humpback whales, which engulf large volumes of prey and water in a technique called lunge feeding. It's been um, hypothesized that uh, lunge feeding for rockholes is very expensive. We wanted to test that hypothesis. We found that lunch feeding for humpback whales is generally cheap. It costs 0.77 megajoules to perform a lunch, which if you convert that into prey, it corresponds to about 225 grams of prey just to pay for the lunch. If you convert that 0.77 megajoules for a lunch, that corresponds to a human going up three stairs. It makes a lot of difference whether they eat five to six times their body weight compared to if they eat more, 10 times their body weight seen in an ecological perspective as well, in competition with fisheries and also management and how much fish and krill they actually need to have available on their foraging grounds. Even with advances in video technology, recording times are still limited by battery size, especially in devices designed for smaller animals. In an article published in PNAS Nexus, Takuya Mayakawa, an engineer at Osaka University in Japan, designed a device to detect and automatically record rare behaviors performed by streaked shearwaters. We collected sensor data from streaked shearwaters in advance and then implemented a machine learning model that detects isolated data, but the model was too large for our device with limited memory. We used a kind of technique called knowledge distillation to construct a kind of small model that mimics the behavior of the large model. And then we implement the small model on the device. We could identify so few types of so foraging behaviors. The bird performed dipping behavior several times and then dive vertically to catch a fish. This indicates that the birds first confirm the location of the fish. This is the second type of foraging behavior. They are flying over the sea and then dive into the sea and then capture fish. They perform this type of foraging behavior when a fish is situated close to the sea surface. Therefore, they change the type of foraging depending on the location of the fish. Understanding the foraging behaviors of marine animals can provide a baseline for estimating how they may be impacted by disturbances, such as overfishing and the effects of climate change. As we have seen, animal-borne video cameras can provide a first-hand look at otherwise hard-to-observe animal behaviors in the open ocean. Thanks for tuning in to Science Sessions. If you like this episode, please consider leaving a review and helping us spread the word.